Hi everyone and welcome to recitation 0H. This is the first part of this recitation and here we'll talk about debugging. The second part of this recitation will talk about monitoring and visualizing of the training process. Debugging your code is an indispensable skill uh, in order to figure out where you, you go wrong because you will go wrong while coding and debugging shows you what's going on inside the code while executing. Just for example, imagine a situation where your code is running without errors, but the output is not what you expect it to be, then you can use the tools that I'll describe in this video in order to dissect the code and figure out where you're going wrong. So we'll talk about three ways of doing debugging. First is the very simple print statement. Then we'll talk about logging. And last but not least, I'll talk shortly about the Python debugger tool called PDB. So for the print statements, here is a line where I'm creating a NumPy vector. And then I'm using print statements to inspect the shape of the tensor with dot shape, the type of the, uh, of the vector with type, and the date, uh, data type of the vector with dot data type. And then I'm doing the same for a torch vector in order to show you guys the differences between the two. So these are two times the same vector, except for the difference that one has a type of numpy and d array, and the other one has a type of torch dot tensor. Now you can also use print statements to inspect what's happening inside of loops. For example, here I'm using a for loop. There's a very simple piece of code here where I'm making a vector with a random length. And then uh, there's this variable sum, which is going to calculate the incremental sum of all the elements of the vector and assign them to uh, the resulting position in the results vector. So print will allow us to, to see what is happening inside of each iteration. So first we're printing that original random data vector here. And then we're going to go in multiple iterations and see the evolution of the result variable. So in the first iteration, we see that sum equals just the first element of this vector and it's assigned to the first place of result. And then in the second iteration, we see that this number here equals the sum of these two numbers here, and so on for the third. So here you see how print allows you to look what's happening inside your code. Logging does something sim similar, but it's a bit more advanced than print in, in the ways that it, like, it allows you to do more. Um, logging can give you more context information like the time and the file name where the execution has happened. You can also use different severity levels in order to differentiate which messages are important and which are not. And you can print um, statements to a file, a separate file, so that you can leave behind breadcrumbs to trace back to the point where your code has broken before. Because with print, if you print, it's going to be printed to the terminal. And if you stop your computer, you'll lose all those print statements. So that's the big advantage of logging. In the notebook link, which you can find beneath this video, you'll find that I've added a link here to a Medium article written by a previous DA about logging, which is a good read if you want to learn more about this. So here we have the same code as we had before for the, uh, the for loop that's, uh, that calculates the results vector. And we see that we have added some lines, not that much. We just added here, import logging, which is necessary to import the code that runs this. And here there's three lines in order to configure the logger. So we have a message format, a date format, and we also have the option here to put in a file name. Uh, I'm not going to do that now because I want the log statements to pop up under this code cell. Um, so instead of using print now, we use logging.warning. And then inside of the parentheses, we use the same things as we used in print. So just the contents of the stuff that you want to log. So if we run this cell, we see that we get a very similar output. It's not exactly the same, of course, because we use a random module to create random numbers. Um, and then last but not least, there is a Python debugger. This tool is called PDB, so you also have to import it. And here again, we have the same code as we used for the print statement with one line difference. And that's here, pdb.setTrace. Now this line, um, 
with this line, you put a break point, which is a point where you take a break and it allows you to, from there, inspect the current state of all the variables um, at that place of executing the code. So if we execute, we see that we get an interactive screen where we can put in the name of any variable that we want to inspect at that time. So you see here is a green arrow that points to the line where sum is incremented with the current place of the data vector. Um, the green arrow means that this line has not executed yet. So sum at this place should be zero. So let's check if that is correct. And we see that sum is zero. Let's look at how the results vector looks at this point in the code. And we see that the results vector is still filled with zeros. Now there's a lot of commands that come with this tool and you can get an overview of all those commands if you type help. Now, if it's not immediately clear what these statements do, you can always type help and then type the statements which, uh, which you want to be explained. For example, we see n here. Let's figure out what n does. So now we see n is the same as next, and it continues execution with one line within the current function. So if I type n, we'll see we went to the we went to the next line in the code execution, which is the result. So now sum should be assigned to a number. So let's check if that is correct. And we see that sum equals the first element of the original data vector. Now, result has not yet executed, so that should still be zero. Another um, convenience statement that you can use, a command that you can use is continue. You can also just type C or cont. And that continues either the execution of the code until the next breaking point uh, that it encounters. So here it's the same breaking board again in the next iteration. So now we'll see that we are in the second loop, which we see if you print i, i equals one. So this is the second iteration. And now we can inspect the results vector at this point. And we see that the first position is filled in. So you see that this keeps on running. Um, and if you're done inspecting, you can just type, because you can stop this execution by typing the stop sign here in Colab. You have to type quit or just Q here. And then you'll see that you get out of the code. It gives an error message, but it's not a problem. Uh, it's just because you quitted the PDB tool. So if you were to execute this again with the set trace breakpoint commented out, we'll see that we'll just get the normal execution as usual. Okay, guys, that's it for the debugging part. If you have any questions, you can always contact me. My name is Oscar or any of the other TAs. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next videos.